What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and InScape video for you. So in today's video, I wanted to check out the new features that just got added in the 2.4 release, or the version 2.4 release of InScape. And um, before we get started, today's video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing on this channel, uh, you want to support what I'm doing with the show, make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So as many of you guys know, I'm a big fan of InScape and just real-time rendering in general because I like what it does to the process. It makes it a lot easier. It makes it so you can export and create renderings quickly to really get a good look at what something might look like without having to be a graphic artist or um, a 3D artist or anything like that. It basically allows you to hit that play button and automatically have this kind of render and then you can come in here and you can start editing things like your light without having to mess with a whole bunch of settings or anything like that. That. A couple days ago, InScape released version 2.4, and 2.4 is one of the bigger releases I've seen from them so far. It comes with several new features. I just kind of wanted to give you an overview of what those were um, in order to just kind of give you an idea of what you can do with the program. So to start off, this example model is the LA House by SZ Kristoff. So if you want to download this and mess around with it yourself, you can do that from the 3D Warehouse. So this release basically had four new changes, and I'm going to go through each one of them pretty quickly just to give you kind of an idea. Um, and then I may make a follow-up video for like the grass and some of the other settings. But one of the things that just got added in the new version is you can now export your models to a web viewer. So you can now export your your models so that they actually show up inside a web view viewer and anybody can fly around in them. You don't have to worry about getting an EXE file to anybody or anything like that. Um, this is literally sitting in a Chrome browser right now and you can adjust things like the daylight and you can also fly around so you could send this to a client or really anybody that you want. And It's really cool. Um, first of all, this removes those hardware requirements so you don't need to, this is all getting rendered inside the browser itself. And you can see how you can come in here and you can adjust a lot of these settings in a lot of the same way that you can within InScape. So it's a really easy way to get your renderings out to clients or people that need to see them without you having to um, figure out a way to get them an exe file. Another function that got added within InScape is they've added an asset library. And so I love asset libraries because they allow me to, instead of focusing on adjusting the settings for things like my furniture, um, I can bring in assets myself that are pre-made that are optimized to work with the program. And so to get to that, you just click on this little button that looks like the tree, and that'll open up a window for your asset library. And this has everything in it from uh, like um, stuff that'll go on your desks or on your tables. So like for example, if I wanted to add like a picture frame over here, I could click on that and that'll get brought in. And one of the things I really like about InScape is that this updates in real time. So as I bring these things in, as I add new things from the asset library, they get adjusted within InScape. So having all that context stuff is really nice, but one of the things I really like about this is that I can bring in furniture. So if I was to delete out this SketchUp model, which didn't really look all that good anyway, of the chair, and then I can click the little drop down, there's several different there's several different kinds of models in here. So I can bring in this armchair and you can see how as I bring that armchair in, it updates over here in InScape. And one of the great things about these is they're all optimized for use in InScape. And I guess this was more of a couch over here, so probably I would, real, probably I would move that one. I would probably put the chair over here, and then I could pull down a couch and drop that in here as well. So you can see how easy this is to work with, to bring these in, and then these get brought in with SketchUp models that you can really quickly adjust. And so you can see how those are updating within InScape in real time as I bring them. So let's say we were to go outside our building, I can now bring in things like trees that are contained in that asset library as well. And the nice thing about these is these have a little scale model off to the side of them. So you can see exactly how big they're gonna be. And again, just that real-time updating within InScape is really great. You can see how as I drop these in, they update inside my rendering. And 
So this makes it really easy to add all those context models, which again, I'm, I'm a really big fan of. And one thing you may notice is when I look at these in SketchUp, these are actually brought in as proxies. So they're not brought in with all this extra geometry in here, the like super heavy geometry that always slows down your SketchUp model. Instead, they're getting brought in as proxy files to keep your SketchUp speed up while still giving you a better result over here in your rendering. So you can see how these bushes get brought in as proxies as well. So it's really easy to make those changes. There's also people. I'm hoping they've said they're going to add other things to this asset library as they go. So this library is going to keep growing. But um, again, anything to me where you don't have to focus on things like trees as much as you can just bring them in and focus on the building you're having to show is a great thing. So the asset library was the second thing they added. The third thing they've done is they've improved the grass engine. And so if you remember in Inkscape before, the way that this worked is you would turn on grass rendering using the advanced tab. And then basically anything with the word grass in it would render as grass. So that still kind of stays the same, um, but the way that the grass is brought in is a little bit different. I'm gonna adjust this sun just a little bit. You can see how the grass is in here, and if I was to select this material using the uh, material eyedropper over in SketchUp, you can see how this is getting brought in as grass because it has the word grass in it. And so really what that does is that searches for the word grass in your material type, and then over in your material editor, it sets the type to grass. So you can see how as I click this drop down, this has been set as grass, but they've added a couple new options for the way that you can adjust the grass within your rendering. You can now use this slider to set the height of the grass in your rendering. And in addition to that, you can also change the variation that's brought in so you can make this look more rough or more uniform. So you now have sliders in your material editor that allow you to adjust the way the grass looks. And uh, one of the nice things about that is now this can be brought in for any material. So if I go back to my living room, for example, we'll just fly through here real quick. And then I'll go over here in SketchUp. I know I can link my scenes, but I just didn't. Um, so if I go over here in SketchUp, I can select a material like this carpet. And you can see how right now this carpet is set as a grass material. So usually these get brought in by default as a generic material. But if I was to select this material, click the drop down, and set it as grass, you can see how this actually renders with the grass geometry in your Enscape window. And so what this allows you to do is this allows you to create things like shag carpets or other things as well. You see how you can kind of adjust the variation of this. But the great thing about this is it actually uses the material image in order to create that. So you can see how this image is maintaining the browns and the whites and the uh, darker browns that are in here. And you can also go in and you can adjust your tint color. So if you wanted to adjust the coloration of this, you can see how you can adjust that coloration while still maintaining um, the different colors from that texture. So, and then the last feature I didn't really test, but they're saying that the video rendering speed has really been increased as well. So they're saying it's up to six times faster. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Is this interesting to you? Do you like real-time rendering? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.